Hi, I'm Miss Shelley, and welcome to my science show. We've already learned that living things need air, water, and food to survive. So today, we're going to take a deeper look at the environments where living things live. Now, we didn't have time to go all over the world to find animals, so we asked Steve from Animal Quest to bring the animals to us. Miss Shelley's Science Show. Temperature plays a big part in where an animal can live. Cold-blooded animals can't regulate their body temperatures, so they tend to live in warm areas or have a way to survive cold winter temperatures. So Steve, you've brought us a cold-blooded animal. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, this is Tank, and he's called a savanna monitor. This is an African lizard. They're like three or four feet long when they're done growing. They like nice toasty temperatures. Generally, they eat mostly bugs and snails, as a matter of fact. They blend in extraordinarily well. See, they're mostly gray, and gray is a nice neutral color for blending with like a lot of different stuff. They're kind of like speckly all over, and they got stripier bits towards the back. And this all kind of works together to make it hard for you to see this thing, unless you're really looking for it pretty hard. So is it possible for a cold-blooded animal like Tang to get too hot? And if he yeah. does, what does he have to do? Yes, so again, they can't regulate their own body temperature, right? So if they want to heat up, they got to sit in the sun. If they want to cool down, get in the shade. These guys are actually pretty good at digging holes. So if they got a nice hole nearby or one that's already been dug for them, but go in there where it's nice and cool or uh, get in the water, they're actually pretty good swimmers. So now Steve and I are on the ground with our next friend who is a warm-blooded animal. Warm-blooded animals can regulate their body temperature so they don't necessarily need to live somewhere that's warm. They just need to live somewhere where they can meet their basic needs of getting air, food, and water. So Steve, can you introduce us to our warm-blooded friend? Yeah, this is Waldo and he's called, well they have a few different names. They're called Patagonian Maras, Patagonian Cavies, Patagonian Hares, and they're also called Dillabees. But yeah, they are a warm-blooded animal, and if you look at his ears, you can see one of the ways that they do regulate their body temperature. So they don't sweat or anything like we do to cool down. One of the ways they have to cool down is to use the blood vessels in their ears. So if you look, they're kind of thin, they got all the blood running through there, and if it's a particularly hot day, they can kind of fan those ears out as much as they can, and the air moving across those ears helps to cool down their entire body. It's pretty neat. They also have like some weird stuff about, I don't know if you can see on the back of his legs, they have this like thick callus, just thickened skin, because these guys are very social like their cousin the guinea pig, and they look out for each other, and one of the ways they do that is, so they have these burrows that are kind of set up like a little neighborhood, right? So everybody's got their own burrow, but everybody will take turns looking out for everybody. So they'll kind of sit on their back end, looking around, listening, smelling for trouble. If you ever had your leg fall asleep though, you need to get up and move around when your leg's asleep. That's a huge problem. These extra thick bits of skin on the, on the back of their legs are help to prevent them from falling asleep. It's a neat little trick. Now some animals like amphibians need wet environments in order to survive. So Steve, can you tell us about this amphibian? Yeah, this is Bowser and she is a common snapping turtle. So these guys, we have them all over almost the entire United States, like seriously throw a rock and if there's a body of water and it, it's probably got some snapping turtles in there. These guys are primarily in the water. And I mean, if you kind of look at them, it makes a lot of sense. They got the webbing, if you look at their tummy. Their shell is made so that they can move their legs a little better so they can swim a little more efficiently. Now these guys are completely carnivorous. They eat a lot of fish. They'll eat sometimes other smaller turtles, frogs. Now they're what you usually call an ambush predator too. So they don't like go out of their way looking for stuff to eat. They just pick a nice cozy spot to hang out kind of like this. And if something comes close enough, their neck is actually really long. They whip it out really fast and just grab that thing and start horking it down. But if you get too close to them, they get really angry. They open that mouth, they hiss at you. And if you get too close, they will get you. But you're still, you know, they're not likely to come at you. Okay. <laughs> Diet is a very important part of an animal's survival. If an animal can't eat, it's not going to survive, and that's also going to dictate which environments they can live in. So we have a carnivorous animal here, and can you tell us a little bit about this animal? Yeah, so her name is Vida, and she is a ball python. They're also called a royal python. But yeah, they are completely carnivorous. Not particularly picky either about what it is, but they're mostly terrestrial, so they like to stay on the ground or under the ground. Silly, all kinds of little mammals they find, but they're not opposed to eating things like birds' eggs or lizard eggs and stuff like that. They see okay, but kind of the way their eyes work, it's kind of harder for them to figure out if something is like alive unless it moves. So they have this sense of smell again to kind of try and find stuff. You'll find a lot of snakes too, and these guys have it. They have these little 
It almost looks like she's got a mustache going on, but those are little heat sensing organs. So in addition to being able to smell things, they can kind of sense the heat coming off of stuff. So if you're hunting warm blooded animals that have that body temperature, it's a lot easier to find them that way too. So on the opposite end, some animals don't eat any meat at all and only eat plants. We call these animals herbivores. So can you tell us about the herbivore you've brought in, Steve? Yeah, this is Ivory and she's called a chinchilla. And although they kind of look like a rabbit thing, they're a type of rodent, kind of like a mouse or a rat. These guys live in the, in the Andes Mountains and they mostly eat whatever seeds and flowering plants they can find. They like to spend a lot of time in burrows or like rocky crags and crevices, which is actually evidence a little bit by looking at them. And you might notice she's got enormous whiskers, very, very long whiskers. So these guys spend a good deal of time in pretty dark places. Like they see well outside at night, but if you're like underground, there's a point where being able to see outside at night doesn't even matter anymore. So they use their whiskers to kind of feel around to make sure they know where they're going. But these guys are most well known for their hair. So they have the most hair of any land mammal and they're really obnoxiously soft. So I tell people it's like you're touching a cloud. They're not supposed to get particularly wet because it's kind of hard for their hairs to dry out fully. So they bathe in kind of a weird way. They roll around in dust, right? And then just like a dog jumping out of the pool, they just kind of pop out and shake to get all that dust off. But it grabs on to other pieces of dirt and oils from your hands and stuff and just kind of plucks it off their hairs, leave them squeaky clean. Ivory is like a cute little fluffy cloud. So today, we took a deeper look at the environments where living things survive. We talked about carnivorous animals, herbivores, as well as cold-blooded and warm-blooded and amphibious animals. I hope to see you next time on another episode of Miss Shelley's Science Show.